हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम अगेन फ्रेंड्स इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर टुडे वी वांट टू अंडरस्टैंड अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्रिटिकल थ्योरी मार्क्सिज्म फ्रेंड्स मार्क्सिज्म इज अ लिटररी मूवमेंट और अ क्रिटिकल थ्योरी which was propounded by karl marx and that's why it is entitled as marxism and it came into existence during the mid 19th century or you can say during the mid victorian era so friends let's try to understand what this marxism is friends last year when you were studying william henry hudson's book an introduction to the study of literature there we studied that literature is the reflection of life and society literature has a close connection with the society in which it is written in which it is published okay so william henry hudson believes that every work of art is a social product literature is a social product you cannot detach literature from the society from the social environment in which it is written from the time period during which it was published then you must remember then because we discussed then also then who is an important french critic he also examines literature as the product of these three race milieu and moment okay according to then literature actually is the result of the race of the author the milieu of the author and the moment race means the history of the author the whole tradition of the author milieu means the social environment in which the author is brought up okay and the moment means the time period during which the author is living all these three factors make up the whole you know existence of literature so karl marx also he was a sociologist and he believed that literature has some very close connection with the society okay karl marx who lived in germany okay he propounded a new socialist theory okay in his the communist manifesto please remember this title the communist communist manifesto which was published in 1848 this date is very important because it was from this date onwards you know that karl marx you know with the publication of the communist manifesto he developed this theory which is now known as marxism as you can see here on the screen karl marx who lived in germany who lived during the 19th century was born in 1818 and died in 1883 he was a great philosopher of his time he was a great sociologist a great historian and a great economist okay his theory marxism considers text or literature as an expression of class struggle according to karl marx you know uh, literature always expresses the class struggle of the society in which it is written okay according to him you know all societies are divided into different classes right and there is some conflict among all these different classes in all societies in all cultures in all countries he said that 
either the society is divided between the ruling class and the working class or the society is divided between the rich and the poor or the owners and the workers or the urban people and the people living in rural areas okay or the society is divided between men and women so these are different parameters on which we are actually dividing our societies and Karl Marx believed that there is some conflict which is found in all societies among all these different classes there is a conflict between the rich and the poor the owners of the factory and the workers of the factory okay there is a conflict between men and women there is a conflict between upper class people and lower class people always you know you find some conflict between these two and he believed that literature expresses this class struggle if i use his own words karl marx words you know you read these lines the history of all hitherto existing society is the history of class struggles friends underline this sentence it is very important according to him the whole history uh, of all hitherto hitherto means till now so far existing society if you examine the whole history of any nation you know then the society is that history is nothing but the history of class struggles okay there are different types of classes like we have free men and slave people those who are slaves and those who are free people those who are the masters of slaves okay we have patrician and plebeian we have lords and the serfs we have guide masters and journeymen uh, journeymen in a word okay in in other words you can say one is the oppressor and the other one is the oppressed one is always uh, exploiting the other okay rich are exploiting the poor men are exploiting the women upper class is exploiting the lower class there is a conflict between the upper class and lower class between the ruling party uh, ruling people and the uh, common citizens right so literature according to him you know presents this constant conflict of the society in which it is produced okay let's first further read there is a conflict between the oppressor and the oppressed stood in constant opposition to the one another both classes are in opposition okay carried on an uninterrupted not hidden now open fight that each time ended either in the revolutionary reconstruction of the society at large there is a conflict and sometimes there is a revolution against the upper class you know against the other class of the society and that brings about the whole reconstruction of the society the society is changed later on after this conflict okay or in the common ruin of the contending classes either the they revolt and they make a new change okay in the society or they are ruined at the end they are defeated okay and he believed that literature always deals with this class struggle which is found in the society now if you examine india ancient india in ancient india also you know manu an important sociologist who uh, a philosopher wrote manu smriti right in manu smriti indian society also was divided into four different classes we must know that okay who are these four classes those who know the vedas they were known as brahmins those who govern the land those who are the rulers they were known as kshatriyas right they used to rule the country they used to govern the people and those who trade or those who do some business they were known as vaishyas and those who serve they were known as shudras right so in india also 
right from the ancient times you know the society was divided into these four different categories these four classes and there used to be conflict among all these four classes right so marx opinion is that literature is not a matter of personal taste or expression he says that literature has nothing to do with entertainment okay aesthetics because literature has some connection close connection with the social economic and political conditions of the time so marxist theory is mainly concerned with these questions friends they generally try to find out the answers to these three questions what are these three questions number 1 is the text a mirror of social values that means the marxist critique tries to examine whether this literature reflects the social values of the society number 1 number 2 the marxist critique when he examines or when he interprets literature you know they find they try to find out is it a form of propaganda for the ruling classes okay whether this piece of literature this work of art that i am trying to interpret does it you know propagate the ruling classes and they also examine can literature challenge the social norms so according to the marxist critics you know literature sometimes you know become becomes the voice of the ruling class sometimes becomes the voice of the non ruling class right literature reflects the social values the economic conditions the political conditions of the country of the society so these questions they are concerned with okay now this is very important friends karl marx has given the concept of base and superstructure as you can see here on the screen you know he talks about two structures one is the base that is the foundation and the other one is the superstructure now what is this base okay base means the economic conditions of man they make the base it includes tools machines labor raw material property commodities economics and all so here on the lower level we have one one strong foundation which is known as base you know it means all these things business property uh, machinery factories and all right where the lower class people are working even the upper class people are also there right and above that you know they make one super structure it includes law religion ideology politics education and so on okay so according to karl marx you know this base after all governs the law right those who are governing the base they are also governing religion they are governing law they are governing ideology a major ideology of the society or they are they become uh, they have power in politics they have power in education okay what karl marx wanted to say was you know uh, he says that superstructure means the way we look at the society marx considers superstructure as consciousness or awareness or a kind of understanding of the nation of the society if i use uh, karl marx words he said that it is not the consciousness of men that determines their being there is their existence but on the contrary you know their social existence always determines their consciousness right so our ability to think for ourselves is actually limited our ideas 
are shaped by the material and economic conditions of life. Or let me give an example, right? Say for example, if somebody is very poor, working in a factory, his ideology is limited, but the same person starts struggling in his life, starts struggling against the upper class, and slowly and gradually he becomes richer and richer, and he becomes the upper class man, and then his ideology is changed. His, his way of looking at the society is changed. Why? Because his class is changed. So this change uh, is the essence and that is presented in literature. Right? Now let's see in detail how there is some connection between Marxism and literature. How this theory is applied in literature. Now let me give you an example. You know, uh, if you examine the uh, the literature of the feudal times, okay, feudal societies, uh, people loved chivalric romances, right? People loved stories about the kings and queens and the knights and all. Why? Because in those times, the feudals, the kings were in were considered as the most powerful people. So in those times, literature was impacted, affected or influenced by these feudal kings, right? And because they were in the power. So that is an example. Even if you examine modern literature in today's times, you know, uh, the capital, we are living in a capitalist, capitalist society. And here, in today's times, if you examine literature, people enjoy watching James Bond's movies. We don't like to watch the movies about kings and queens and uh, great uh, princes, right? We want to uh, watch the movies on James Bond, okay, which celebrates the glorious lifestyle of the modern gentleman. So, uh, our taste is also influenced by the time in which we are living or the society in which we are living. Raymond William, uh, Williams, who, are, who is a modern critic, is known as a cultural critic. He also has written Marxism and Literature, which was published in 1977. You know, he believed that every historical time period has competing hegemonies, right? Hegemonies. The dominant hegemony. Hegemony means the authority. The dominant authority promotes the interests of the ruling classes. The remaining hegemony defends the culture, right? So there is a conflict between the ruling class and the other people, between the uh, people who are in authority and people who are not in authority. And literature always reflects or presents this, uh, this conflict of different classes, right? Now, uh, let me give you some more examples from literature. Like Wordsworth, right? We we all have studied William Wordsworth's poems, right? He loved, he was a romantic poet and he loved rustic life. Uh, he loved nature, right? And that he has expressed in his poems. So, uh, if a Marxist critic or if you examine the poems of Wordsworth from a Marxist point of view, you know, then we can say that his poems are actually presenting the class struggle. What class struggle you find in his poems? There is a class struggle between the rural life and the urban life. Yes or no? Right? City life and village life. If you, if you read Daffodils, in Daffodils he has used the word golden. He talks about the golden I saw or, and all at once I saw a host of golden daffodils. So he talks about golden daffodils. Now gold is what? Gold was important for the urban people but for a rural man you know, this daffodils is gold. So gold, the word gold makes it Marxist literature, Marxist poem, right? Uh, according to Karl Marx, Wordsworth has actually raised the voice of the rural people against the urban people. Not only this, if you examine Jane Austen's poems, 
uh, sorry, Jane Austen's novels, right? Uh, then again, you find that class struggle. What class struggle? Here, you find the struggle between the men and women. You find why? Because Jane Austen's novels are feministic novels, right? Where the voice of the women has been raised by Jane Austen. So, uh, you can uh, do a kind of Marxist criticism of Jane Austen's novel. You can find this struggle between men and women in, in Jane Austen's novels, right? So, friends, I hope the idea is clear now about Marxism. So, the question at the end is, who were the major followers of Marxism? Then we have some very important names like Richard Wright, Claude Mackay, Jean Paul Sartre, Simon de Beauvoir, all these people followed this theory of Marxism and they tried to interpret literature of their countries from this Marxist point of view. Right? Why they were? Because they were very deeply influenced by Marxist theory. Right? Uh, so friends, now let's conclude this discussion by saying that literature reveals to us the spirit of the time, okay? Literature presents or expresses the spirit of the age in which it is written. It expresses the problems, the social, economic and political problems of the people, okay? And literature is not about entertainment to a Marxist critic. Literature has nothing to do with entertainment. Literature does not delight the reader. Literature has nothing to do with arts and all. Okay? Uh, he believed that literature is nothing but the expression of class struggle. Marxist literary theory tries to interpret the works of art from the point of view of this class struggle. Okay? And it focuses more on the social, political and economic conditions of the people. It does not fo focus, it does not concentrate on the artistic value or the aesthetic value of the work of art. How good that work of art is, whether it is pleasing or not, whether it is artistically complete or not, these Marxist critiques they ignore these things. So friends, I hope the whole discussion is clear to you. If you have any doubts or questions, do write to me in the comment section of this channel and please share this video among your friends and classmates. Thank you. Thank you very much.